Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Hey, everybody. Uh, This coming Friday, as of this recording, uh, today is Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. This Friday, the 22nd of February, we're going to be doing a Zoom on using Airtable to track inventory. So if you come over to the events page on my website, you'll find this. It may take a second to load because I'm embedding this calendar from Airtable, speaking of. And you'll see, as of, as of my recording, you'll see today's date lit up like this, the 19th. And then you can look straight across to that coming Friday. So if we're not past the 22nd yet when we're recording this, you can still get in here and you can still register. If you're past the 22nd, you'll find the recording right here on the website under Zoom in with Seth, David, and Friends, which, by the way, is right here. You can move your mouse over a podcast, but as many of you know, all of these uh, menu items with drop downs essentially drop down the same mega menu is what this is. It's called a mega menu. And you can click here to access old recordings. Meanwhile, if you click on the registration link, it'll take you here so you can register for this. And I want to show you um, what we're going to be doing because it's going to be about tracking inventory with Airtable, which, by the way, was inspired. um, I was first introduced to Airtable by an interior designer who has a lot of unique inventory items. And she uh, was using Airtable because she didn't want to clutter up QuickBooks Online or yeah, it was QuickBooks Online actually, with all these items that were only going to get used once, right? So what I want to do is I want to show you some pretty sophisticated stuff that you can do with Airtable though. So I want to get the basic framework built right now so that when we get there on Friday, first of all, you can follow along, open up your own Airtable account if you haven't already uh, set up an account. Look for the link I get credit for having sent you. I don't get paid. They just give me a credit against my bill. It's no big deal, but everything helps. So um I'll give you that link, but here's what we want to start to build real quick. Here are the tables we want to start with. First of all, I need my customers in here, okay? And then I'm going to just create a bunch of tables from scratch here so you can get the idea of the lay of the land. I'm going to create projects, okay? Then we have asset types or names, and you'll see where I'm going with that. And then here we have... SKU numbers, right? Uh, asset, some people call them serial numbers, depending on you know what the nature of the inventory is. And then here we're going to have a table called assets checked in or out. So we're going to get pretty sophisticated with this so we can really track our inventory properly. And to give you an idea of you know how this starts off and where it gets exciting, in every table, this first column should be something unique. So it's perfect for the customer name in this case, right? Because we'll, we're, we're not going to repeat the customer ever more than once. So let's say the customer here is Nerd Enterprises. Okay, and let's say the project. Uh, so I need a new field, but let's go over here to projects first, and let's create a new project. So we'll call this Project X, right? And what I want to do is now I want to link this, right? I want to be able to assign. So here in this table, I'm probably going to just list the customer's contact information, right? So I might have, um, first of all, I like having, a, especially in a case like this, uh, a column that's the status, right? Is the customer sort of active or inactive? So let's go with a, a checkbox. Now let's do a single select drop down, right? And two options, active, inactive. This comes in handy because it allows you to filter the list, especially as the list grows. Uh, Active will be a nice green. Inactive will be like black dead, right? Because as the list grows, you're going to want to be able to filter this list and only show the active customers, right? And we're going to do something similar with projects. So Project X, the next thing we're going to need is we want to be able to associate the customer with the project, right? I could do it but either way, but this way to me makes a lot more sense. So let's go insert left. And here we're going to call this the customer, but I'm not going to make somebody just write out the customer again. And then we have typos and there's no linking. The whole point of Airtable is right here. At least a big point of Airtable is this choice right here where I can link to a record from the customer's table. And in this case, I would not want to allow linking to multiple records. The theory being that I would only ever do a single project for a single customer. 
So when I click save now, this creates that link so I can click here and it basically gets me into a drop down from whatever's in my customers table over there. And what happens next when I go back to customers is it actually creates this, the, the mirror image linked field from here over to projects, right? What I want to do in this case though, because I'm not going to use this from this side, but it just Airtable has to show, hey, we've got the link both ways. So I'm going to click here where it says hide fields and I'm going to hide projects because here I just want customer and contact information, right? So I would have like street address, right? Uh, all the other contact information for that customer, phones, emails, whatever. And it's always nice to have the notes and attachments fields here. So you can do those things. I can attach things like the customer's logo or a contract, whatever I need, right? And then same with the project. The projects, we're going to have all the information we want to have about this project, right? Um, and so this Friday in the Zoom, or if it's after the fact, by the time you're watching this, go catch the recording. Um, you'll be able to see how we kind of start building this out. Right, but this way, ultimately what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to track inventory here where we have the asset serial and SKU numbers, right? And then there's gonna be a link to the type, right? Because we might have different asset types, different types of inventory. And then over here, we're gonna create a table where we can indicate what's been checked in or out. And then we're gonna put some traps in here to let us know if somebody's made a mistake. If we check out something uh, more times than we have inventory available for, it's gonna give us a color code so we know that we've got a problem. We've probably forgot to log something that was checked back in and so on and so forth. So that, my friends, is uh, to prepare you for this Friday, you got a little homework to do. Go set up your Airtable account if you don't already have one, and then set up your inventory list project, or base is it what it's called in Airtable, so that on Friday you can follow along really intelligently, probably have some good questions to bring with you to the, to the event, and I'm excited to get into this and answer them. I think this is going to provide tremendous value for a lot of people. Of course, that's why I do what I do, is in hopes of provi providing tremendous value for lots of people. I'll see you on Friday.